Hey, you're on the road with Chris and Norm, and we are on a journey here to see six blackbirds. If you know what a blackbird is, Lockheed blackbirds. This is our third trip to Arizona this year, and on this route, we will see six of the famous Lockheed aircraft. We plan on stopping and touring all of them, and here is the first one. Uh, they made 50 blackbirds. They made 32 or 33 like this. And that is so cool. You look down there and the engine is out and the wing is folded straight up to remove the engine. And I'll show you how the wing is supposed to be. You can see it. That, well, that one also has the engine out, but the wing's in its bottom position. And next to it is a D21 drone. Kind of unusual to see one of these with the cockpit open. I've not seen that before. expansion joints. The nose is held on by four bolts and it was changed out per mission. It could have different intelligent packages on it. This little uh, deal right here I believe, this little thing is a forward-looking radar of some kind. There is an ins there is an instrument right behind that. It's not on all of them. This little thing is unique to... I don't know how many of them have that. I'll look at the other ones. But this is a big aircraft. This is as long as a Boeing 737. I mean, it's, it's big. Here's the um, Astro Inertial Navigation System. This was really quite revolutionary at the time. And the whole thing worked out of this little window and it actually looked at, it was a computer that looked at stars and told them where they were. this was the latest piece of technology on the planet when they came out with it. And some of that stuff over there. And up in the air is one of these things. Blackbirds hold all speed records for human jet-powered aircraft. This particular aircraft is the second highest hour or mileage airframe of all Blackbirds with 3,512 hours. I haven't determined the reason for the little nose blisters here that they all have i don't know if it's aerodynamic to get things around it or if this area here is a sensor chris i'm pretty sure that this little guy right down here is a sensor this thing sure it is i don't think that's there on the other ones i've seen but this aircraft flew a lot of missions it got um this is one of the two aircraft that got reinstated in 1995 and flew for another couple years. It was okay. one of the last ones flying. The rest of the fleet was parked in 1990. This one got, re but NASA had two that flew into 98 or 99. But this one flew the most, undoubtedly the most Mach 3 time. How many people tried to shoot this particular airplane down, but nobody did it. This year she sits, she's retired. Here's some of the corrugated panels that are part of the heat expansion of this aircraft. I'm, I'm underneath the right wing of the SR-71 right now. Kind of walked at it. The engine, the engine is removed in this one. But you can see how big the inlet is. Oh, this is fantastic. And the engine is sitting right here. Here she is. This is a J58 engine. These big uh, tubes are bypass, pressure bypass. Goes right past the compressor sta stages, takes the first few blades, and then they bypass. Ooh, this blade, that blade took a hit. Oh, here we go. And here's a start cart. This is a start cart for an SR-71. It has two, they started off with Buick engines and they end up with Chevy engines. It takes two engines to start one of these SR-71 engines. And here's one right here, all the way back to there. It's just huge, huge. And so I'm at the back of the SR-71 and the left engine is out. Uh, pretty cool. 
that's actually the wing up there and it completely pivots open with the, en the engine. This, I've never seen one like this. I never knew it could do this, but the engine is out of it. It's sitting right next to the engine bay. The whole, that's the, that's the wing pointed straight up. This is the bottom of the wing. And to take an engine out on one of these things, I guess you pull bolts from all those and it's got a hinge line. This is amazing. Wow. And you can really see inside the structure this. I've never seen one like this. Completely amazing. Let's see if I can get my camera up to that hinge line. Oh yeah. I've never seen one like this before. Like that's the bottom of the wing. They undo all these bolts and they open this sucker up. Yeah. These engines are, it's all about compression and all of yeah. these openings are all about letting pressure by so that things don't stall. Those yeah. big pipes are all about taking pressure around, around compression stages and putting them straight into, this is the after burning stage yeah. of the engine is just from there back. And that's all it's compression. Like you get your first compression, second compression. This wasn't around yet. No, but it is unique. Yeah. That it, it, it is unique is this, no. in how it runs. But this is pretty amazing. You can see that the, the titanium, it's all made of titanium and it has that sort of oily color to yeah. it. And you, you just see it all and all their beautiful machining. And this aircraft was built in the 1960s. Father? Yes? <laughs> this is pretty amazing. Um, oh, it looks like she's got a flat tire. Uh, the tires are quite unique too because they had to take a uh, heat that was just... Um, they take a lot of heat. They have aluminum in them. This aircraft, you can see right in front of the wheels has a, the, the tire cool down fan that got placed in front of the aircraft every time it landed. These things were very hot. Here's a section of the tires. Oh, look at this. An awesome section of the tires and brakes. The tires of an SR-71 Blackbird. Pretty thick bead on them. There's the brakes. And here's the main landing gear with a brake fan in front of it. Oh, this baby. So this inlet cone, it went back and forth 26 inches. This material of this cone was completely new design stuff for its day. Material that could take a lot of temperature for a long time. Completely amazing aircraft. Wow. Well, this is a camera. This thing right here is a camera. And there's your lens. They shoot into a, a mirror to point it where they want. And there's their rolls of film. That is a piece of film hanging over the edge here. That's a piece of film. And there's the rolls. And it has a fair amount of electronics. And I reckon this camera would fit in the side of this thing somewhere. Probably right there. Or this bay. Oh, this is so cool. I should start at the front. A little reflection in here. But here's some cool stuff. This is pretty neat. They've got this guy opened up. But this stuff is their electronic countermeasures, electronic stuff. Who knows what this thing was emitting? But it was nasty. 
I'm pretty sure the Russians didn't like it. sort of stick my camera right in this plane, I would. I think I am in love with this plane. Okay, we like that museum so much we bought the book. Um, that was fantastic. The SR they have there, it shows how easily you can take the wings off of one. They have one in the wings up position to take the engine out. And as a matter of fact, sometimes they changed out the wings on these things when they had accidents with them. I think there was one in Norway. Very cool how they presented it. Uh, this, this this museum is, is unbelievable. It's a collection of museums and an IMAX theater. And I gotta go back.